my name is Dave Southwell. Um, I'm really excited to be here at SCALE and DevOps Days LA. I've been coming to this conference for a while now, and it's really exciting to get a chance to share this story with you all. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and of course, thank you to uh, DevOps Days LA for having me. A little background about me. Uh, I was born here in Pasadena. Um, I've been playing with computers uh, since the 80s when I was a kid. Uh, and in my professional career, I've held just about every role there is, um, working at various different tech companies, uh, Sun Microsystems, Oracle, and some other small companies you've probably never heard of because it never went anywhere. Um, I'm passionate about solving problems and helping people bring their visions to life uh, using technology. So uh, with that all out of the way, let's, let's, get to the, let's get to the talk. So a while back, uh, I had an interesting conversation with a colleague. The discussion was around metrics and observability. That's a subject that I'm really passionate about, at least as of recently. Uh, and over the course of the conversation, it became clear that uh, they definitely had a preference. They had a preference for buy, not build. And I prefer to build, but I'm open-minded, so I enjoy a good intellectual discussion. But over time, it was clear that they weren't going to change their mind, and I didn't have any reason to change mind either, so we kind of just let the conversation wane. Uh, a few months later, uh, this colleague approached me with uh, the proverbial olive branch and said, hey, uh, I got this notice about a meetup for an observability company. I want you to come, and I want you to give me your thoughts afterwards. I said, okay, sure, why not? Uh, I've been involved in doing a lot of vendor procurement and things of that nature for a while, so I, I'm familiar with a sales pitch. And this was a sales pitch, but not a very good one. The audience was mostly developers uh, who didn't have much knowledge at all about building an observability uh, stack in-house. Uh, and they were captivated. And I couldn't blame them. Before I really got into metrics and observability myself, I was in the same boat. Look, I'm building an application. I just want a place to get my metrics out there and see what the heck is going on. Uh, lowest frustration method possible, please. But they were captivated by it, as I think a lot of us are. Some of these observability platforms are amazing. They have amazing technology and capabilities. They're fantastic. Um, but one of the things that really stuck with me and bothered me was that they were playing off fear a lot in their sales pitch. Fear of, oh, if you run that yourself, it might go down in the middle of the night. Those things, it's open source. You never know. I mean, isn't that ironic? You, of course, absolutely do know because it is open source. Uh, but it didn't stop people from nodding along and saying, ooh, yeah, yeah. So I could feel like a sense of dread coming on, that I was going to have more of these conversations with somebody, some other development peers who would say, ooh, we should buy this. Why don't we buy that? Why do, why do we do all these things this other way? And that was unfortunate. Uh, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about the case to not outsource your metrics. So just a quick little background for kind of who the target audience is on this. It's all creatures great and small. Passion projects, uh, startups, even enterprises. And what do I mean when I'm talking about scope and terms, metrics, counters, histograms, gauges, logs, anything that you use to construct an SLI, an SLO, or an SLA with? I assume we're all familiar with these TLAs? Yes, lovely. There's at least one person who likes the TLA, uh, the joke. Uh, and what do, we, what do we mean when we talk about outsourcing? Pretty obvious, right? You're not deploying your own time series database, your visualizer, whether it's Grafana or something else like that, or your alerting system. You're not deploying things like Elk, Victoria Metrics, or Prometheus, et cetera. All of your metrics and logs are shipped off to some one of the many different vendors in this space. All right, let's lay out the case and see what you think. Number one reason to not outsource your metrics, and this is actually in no particular order. It's just the order that it came out. Dog food. I'm actually not a fan of verbizing words, although that's, I know that's not very vogue for our industry. A lot of words tend to get verbized, like Googling, which I had a problem with for a long time. Yep, I'm that guy. Um, it's great to be able to acquire and build the skills yourself to run your own metric stack. And that, I found, really empowers a strong DevOps practice within an organization, too. You don't have to rely on somebody who's outside of the company 
to talk to you about metrics and how to instrument code. You can talk to your colleague who's right down the hall, who's probably in the same meetings that you're going to when you're developing your code and get real-time feedback. They know the application as well as you do when you're building it, at least close to as well. So I think it's a strong way to encourage a DevOps practice. Availability. This was the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that I was talking about earlier that was being pitched by this one particular platform. Don't fall for it. I have real world experience from myself and lots of other colleagues. You can run your own metric stack at massive scale and these things are very reliable. Um, it's, it maybe it used to be the case at one point in time that that wasn't true, but in my experience, it's been dead reliable. Sure, there's failures, but have you looked at an SLA for some of the observability platforms? They're actually not that high in terms of nines, if you can even find the definition, which you probably won't find unless you enter into a contract with them. By that time, it's too late. High fidelity, uh, you're probably familiar with this too. Usually you're forced to make a choice. Oh, do I instrument this? Do I not instrument that? Do I use a custom metric or do I just take one that's there? You don't have to make that decision if you've got your own stack that you're running. And you don't have to downsample ahead of time. You can downsample it later. There's no excuse to not instrument every part of your stack. Lastly, cost. I'm sure you saw this one coming. We've all seen those stories, oh, I got a really big bill at the end of the month that I didn't expect. If you run your own stack, it's a lot more predictable. So you, and you can really optimize and tune it to your exact specific, uh, specific use case. Okay, so I don't want anybody to get the impression that I'm trying to make an argument of this or that. It's not this or that. We're spoiled for choice. We have the choice to use both if we want to. There's nothing that says that you have to use entirely one or entirely another. It's a false choice. Don't fall for the false choice. And if you're not familiar with how to run your own stack or build your own metric stack, it's easy to learn. There's a ton of resources out there to bring yourself up to speed and it really doesn't take a lot of time or effort. And some of the solutions that come from observability platforms are amazing. They, they can do the kinds of things that well, yeah, if you've used them, I'm sure you already know. And that's it. That's my case for not outsourcing your metrics. Thanks for listening.